Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. You know, PixInsight is constantly changing. There's been a new release, things are going on, things are being added and improved all the time, very quickly. And so it's only appropriate that one of the recent processes that's been released is called Fast Integration. It's really cool. This is one of the creations of Roberto Satori. He did a fantastic job with this and uh, I really enjoyed using it. In fact, I was really lucky because as part of fast track training, I have all these fast things going on. I have a data set that's huge. And this is what people get to work with when they um, begin to learn in one of my uh, introductory courses. But it took a while to process the data. The data is uh, many, many files that are very, very large. So I figured that this would be a great example to demonstrate how fast integration can be a different path to follow and produce another kind of integrated result. So that's what I'm going to just highlight in this video. I'm going to show you what um, I did previously with fast track training and how long it took, and then what uh, fast integration does, how it works, a little bit about what to look out for, the kind of uh, levers that you can uh, adjust that will improve the process. And then you'll know everything you need to know and you can just take advantage of it. So join me in this video and uh, have a good time. This is going to be a summary of my experience with fast integration, which is just spectacular. And I have kind of the perfect environment, a perfect example of the difference between using fast integration and if you do the kind of the traditional route, which is the full treatment using WBPP in both pre and pro post processing. Fast integration is basically the post processing steps of registration and image integration. And that replaces what you would do in the full treatment with WBPP, which includes more stuff in terms of the measurement, in terms of uh, normalization and things like that. So let me first begin in WBPP where I can show you how to set it up because you need to do this first before you use fast integration. So here are the files. Here's the data that I loaded, that I worked with. It's got 700 frames. Look at the size of these files, 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. Huge frames and 710. When I processed with the full treatment, that is all of these things checked here, you would check all of these things and then run WBPP in the normal way, uh, it took more than 24 hours to do. Just an insane amount of time. Of course, if you're willing to wait, that's great. But with a data set like this, where you have so many frames, and these frames are of all kind of similar kinds of quality, the average of everything is more powerful than that individual treatment, if you will, in terms of the precision that you need to, you think you would get in terms of registration and all the weighting and normalization, all that kind of stuff. A lot of that comes out of the with the wash in terms of this very large set of averaging of everything. So there are some prerequisites, some things that you need to have, but uh, I'll get into those in just a moment. Here are then all of these frames, and all we need to do is just calibrate only. You don't need to do anything after that in WBPP. In this video then, I have this perfect example because I did this set as part of actually uh, my course, Fast Track Training. In fact, my full description of how to take advantage of and how fast integration works is now part of Fast Track Training because it's fast. It's just this perfect uh, synergy of things. Not only is the name kind of cool, they're both fast, but also fast integration literally works in the way that I demonstrate in Fast Track Training in my course. Because in my course, I show the pre-processing of WBPP. I show WBPP in the calibrate only sense. And then of course I describe all the post-processing um, elements that go after that. Well, fast integration is just one particular version of this. It's a version that is uh, simplifies some of this, but it works very well when you have a very large data set. So again, I have that in my fast 
track training course, but we're talking here about fast integration. So I ran this and I got out of it once I did it. This is one shot color camera data. I got uh, the debayered images. They're not yet registered. That's what fast integration is going to do. So I can show you what that data looks like. Here it is. This is the output from WBPP. It's just all of these debayered files. You can see I did cosmetic correction, uh, calibration, cosmetic correction, and the debayering. So here they are. And then I opened up two of them. And these are the raw data, and this is, looks just like you would expect. It's not calibrated, color calibrated in any sense. Uh, but what I wanted to demonstrate is the following idea. If we zoom in here and I draw, for example, you know, a box like this, and uh, let's apply that same preview over here. Uh, and then what we can do is we can blink between these two frames. And of course, we're going to see that they're not going to be perfectly aligned. Blink, and there's a little shift between the two frames, right? Well, that shift is, of course, part of what fast integration is going to take care of. It's going to register the images. But it's going to do so by drawing a small little box here in your images, and then registering the images based on the stars that it finds in the box. Now, this box that I drew, if we actually look at the size of the, uh, the preview here, it's uh, 80 pixels. Look at that. Now, over here, let me just show you that the default here, parameter, is something on the order of 40 or 60 pixels is the default. I actually have to reset, but I don't want to reset. So whatever the default is, it's actually not that much larger than the box that I've drawn on the screen. So that's the first element of fast integration is it looks in this tiny square. Now, if it fails to align based on stars within the square, because the stars between images shift a lot, then it will do a full frame alignment. Of course, that's slower. Every time it has to go and do a full frame alignment, that slows things down, but it doesn't cause a failure in and of itself. And then it's going to look for uh, a certain number of stars. Sorry, here's the box size, that's 60. This is the number of stars it'll look at. When it's looking at the large full image, it's going to not look at all the stars, but it's just gonna look for 60 or so stars. You can change this parameter, how many stars it looks for. You can change the box size here. I, I think it is 60 is the default, and I changed it to 80 here. As you'll see in a moment, I was trying to optimize how fast integration works. You can turn on and off the capability of doing the full alignment. You don't need to have it do it, but it's certainly a good thing to have to just automatically, if it should fail in the small square, go ahead and check uh, to see if it can align based on the larger field view. Now, the way that fast integration does its job after it does this very fast alignment of images, it's going to also integrate but it's doing both things at the same time. It's going to be trying to align and integrate all simultaneously because it does it in batches of images. So the other major control here for fast integration, once you've loaded the files, is down here where you're going to specify how many frames it's going to grab at any time. And then what is the size of the batches of frames that it's going to be doing this alignment and integration. So it doesn't integrate all 700. You get to specify the batches, the groups of files that it's going to integrate. And you want it to be as large as possible. So 50, for example, which is kind of the default, is great if you have batches of 50 out of 700 frames that it's going to align and combine to do the rejection and everything else it's going to do. Uh, but I don't have enough memory, actually. My computer is a little old here. So you want to specify uh, the, the largest number of batches that you can do. And I think probably for my computer, something like on the order of 30. And then you want to be grabbing, that is putting into memory, it needs to have enough files to work with every time it starts doing a batch, right? So you want it to be able to grab and put into memory at least the size of batches that you specified, if not more. So you want it to be at least, you know, here, I'll make it about the same size. So 30, 32. And this is under my limit of uh, what I can, of my available memory. So this would be my batch size um, and prefetch count uh, that's going to be able to do the job for me. It's remarkable how fast this works. Now, the last important parameter that's in the screen here that I want to point out that's probably the most important one in terms of 
uh, a major lever or control in fast integration is this one. The max median tolerance here, the tolerance parameter, is the one that really controls whether it thinks it you know, did a good alignment or not. It's not the fact that it couldn't align. It needs to align within a particular precision, and this gives you some control of how, pre how precise or how forgiving that precision ends up being. Now, in this video, I'm not going to actually run it. It just takes too much time. This is just a summary of how it works. I did run it, and I'll show you some examples here. Uh, one of the things that I asked it to do, though, and I would encourage you to do the same, especially when you start using fast integration, is to generate the log files. So I have here all 700 frames loaded, but previous to this run, I did a short run, and in that short run, I only did like, I don't know, 30 frames or something like that just to generate some information. So let me show you that I have a short run here. You see, I did the big run and there's a short run as well, which is this one, small run, I guess. And one of the things that it will generate are these log files. And uh, the logs, let me just show you all, everything, star dot star. Uh, it's going to list frames that failed. And you can see why they failed. That's the key here. And I'm going to show this to you by opening one of these frames. It'll just open a text editor. And uh, this is all stuff that, you know, you know, you need to know, or uh, as far as the code is concerned, it understands what's going on here. It'll tell you what it was doing and why it failed. Uh, so one of the things that it does is it, it failed at the small box size here. And then, it says that somewhere here, uh, and so then it does a large frame analysis, like I mentioned, it'll try to register on the large frame. So I scroll all the way down here to the bottom, and it says the solution is out of tolerance. Because the default tolerance when you first load fast integration is 1.5, but the median error for this frame was 3.6. So it, though it could align, it didn't match good enough precision, if you will. And so it fails. It puts it in this list of failed things. Now, one of the things that I think, you have to just kind of decide how picky you're going to be. For me, a lot of these small like little errors, because you have so many frames, it doesn't matter as much. Again, you're going to be doing, uh, there is, if your batches are large enough, you're going to be doing still rejection and uh, this average across all these images, even these kind of small errors, um, they don't really make a big difference. And I can demonstrate that for you. One other thing that I want to mention about the data set that I was using, this data set of 700 frames, it so happens that I took this data with frames uh, that had a, a, I was using a German equatorial mount, so the frames were flipped. Some fraction of them were flipped compared to the others. So let me just show you some of the output uh, of the results. When you actually run this, you're going to see in the control or the console, you're going to see this information. You'll see here that there are, in the aligned section here, there are a number of failures. There's 160. Now, that doesn't have to do with the fact that the images are rotated because it's going to do that full frame analysis to try to uh, register the images. That's not an issue at all. Uh, wh what is more important here, the reason for these failures is mostly, as you'll see in a moment, it's almost all due to the tolerance, uh, that tolerance factor. So I'm going to show you uh, one of those you know, failed ones so you can see what the difference is. It mostly is kind of the seeing, actually. When you have these big bloated stars, then the, uh, that tolerance um, becomes more of a factor. But what I wanted to point out to you here is because these frames were rotated, it kind of meant that more often or not, depending upon the amount of shift, that it had to do the full frame um, alignment. And look at the time that it took here. It took almost three hours, which is still much, much better than 24 hours, right? Um, but you can make it much, much more efficient if you pre-flip the frames, because then it's less likely that it's going to need to do that full frame analysis, that full frame registration, and it makes it much more uh, efficient for fast integration to do its job. If it is easy, and it was in this data set because it was easy to identify all the frames that were flipped, if I just go ahead and pre-rotate those frames, those debayered images, and then put it in fast integration, it runs like lightning. 
So in this example, this is another run that I did. Now this is on the full data set, right? Um, you can see that now um, I'm adjusting the tolerance a little bit and now we have a huge improvement in the number of frames which are aligned. Now we only had 53 failures out of 700 whatever. So we're up at a 93% or so. Uh, but look at the time, three hours down to 38 minutes. You can see that just by not having it do that full frame alignment, how much time it saves. One of the things that the, that the documentation suggests is that the images should be in chronological order. And that's really a proxy for having the images have small shifts between them. Uh, in this case, my data was not in chronological order, but as long as the shifts were small, in this case, especially after um, pre-flipping the frames, uh, everything worked really well. And then finally, when I went full scale um, in terms of being permissive on that tolerance, I had a actually no failures at all. It did it in 40 minutes, what instead took 24 hours or more, uh, and uh, there were no failures in alignment at all. It just went perfectly. So in the end of this video, in just a moment, I'm gonna show you the comparison between the fast integration and the full treatment integration. And you can therefore see you know, what the hubbub is all about. So let me just go back to that small run so I can identify uh, the fail, one of those failed frames here. And you can see, oh, I guess I need to go to the logs first. Hang on, let me go to the log. I need to find out which one of those frames was the, uh, so here's the small run here. Here's the logs. I should have paid attention a moment ago. Star dot star. So frame number 28, right? That's one of the failed frames. So I will close this take our reference, zoom into another frame. It's kind of a failure frame. Yeah, you can see that one's got kind of that big difference in seeing. So there, there's this variability. And depending upon how tolerant you are, can determine, you know, here, the calculation of the centroid can come up with an error because it's just a bigger, fuzzier blob. So at the end of the day, for my set, now this probably is, this is more of an extreme set of data, I suspect, but I just was try, I just went ahead and was as tolerant as almost possible. I just put this all the way over so that I knew it was getting, uh, you know, using almost all the frames. And you can kind of see what the errors look like if you, again, generate the logs and you just look at some of the failed files. You can even try a small run. You don't need to do all of the data just to determine kind of what the, the typical tolerance that might be necessary to get fast integration to do it all, if you wanted to, you can go ahead and let it, you know, not use a certain number of frames and say that the, the remaining frames are probably best anyway. So that's another way to think about it. So I did that. I also increased my box size just to be a little more generous with the shifts between stars and all of that. Uh, and that's it. I ran it and here then are the results. Let's uh, minimize these things. Here is the fast integration result, and I've just zoomed in here to some interesting portion of the nebula, and here is the result with the full treatment. And so it's the same data. Big difference in time, though. The difference in time, again, like a day's worth compared to 40 minutes. So let's go ahead and compare. And if the, you know, the image quality is comparable, then you go, wow. Look at that. In terms of a time savings, if I had this number of frames, hundreds of frames, short exposures, and I wanted to put it all together, I would definitely choose fast integration. What a time savings. It's just amazing. Here, there is a difference between the frames. It looks like there's a, a bit of a contrast difference, and I suspect that that's probably due to the uh, local normalization that I used when I did the full treatment of WBPP. So fast integration doesn't have that, but at the same time, looks pretty good to me. So I'll zoom out, I'll show you the zoomed out version here between the two. And uh, this is really what I wanted to show you because I did do the experiment. There is a difference in black level as well, so that, that's harder to manage here just because it's a difference in processing. So here, I'll make this one a little bit darker to try to match, not too much darker. I don't know if... I'm close there. I'm still not quite doing it. There are some differences between the two treatments because it really did take two different paths. But at the end of the day, 
Uh, it's hard to argue that uh, fast integration, boy, it just didn't do a marvelous thing. So I hope you enjoyed this video, a quick summary of how to take advantage of fast integration. I hope now that you know that there are parameters you can adjust here. I, should, I recommend highly read the documentation. It does explain all of that. And uh, generate that log, especially in the beginning, so that you can just see what kinds of frames are failing and adjust if you want, you know, the, uh, um, the tolerance here to make sure you're including as many frames as you would like. And then if there are elements of the image that need to be made uh, a little more regular so that fast integration can run very quickly and smoothly, in this case, I flip the frames and that just uh, improves the time, uh, then you can consider that as well. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for joining me.